time now for our political panel with Ebony Bennett, Deputy Director of the Australia Institute, and Kian Hussey, Research Fellow at the Institute of Public Affairs. Thank you both for joining me. Ebony, what do you make you. of Labor's cabinet reshuffle? Do you think it's enough to help Labor this year? Well, that remains to be seen. Uh, certainly, it's often hard to judge straight away the ripple effects of uh, cabinet reshuffles like this one. I do think it's... Uh, uh, a reasonable sign for Labor's position on climate change that Mark Butler has been replaced by another heavy hitter like Chris Bowen. That shows that Labor still really thinks the issue of climate change uh, is an important one. Um, but climate change is going to be the big issue this year. The Biden administration is going to see much more effort and ambition put into climate change uh, policies globally. That's going to see huge pressure in turn placed on the Morrison government, which has been recalcitrant for years now. The coalition government has always been uh, way behind the public when it comes to ambitious climate policy. And while internally I think the coalition uh, has, we've already seen, be very captured by the fossil fuel industry, uh, we've seen, you know, the Prime Minister very committed to a gas fueled recovery and to subsidising a new gas-fired power plant in New South Wales. Uh, I think there will be huge pressure for the coalition uh, to change course on climate change this year. And Labor also is going to come under huge pressure uh, to have much more ambitious climate policy, uh, whether or not it remains ambitious enough to meet what the science tells us is required uh, is another story altogether. Kian, Chris Bowen was on Sky News this morning with Kieran Gilbert and he refused to reveal if Labor had a plan for a 2030 emissions reduction target. Are you surprised by this? Well, yeah, I think it's pretty typical of the Labor Party, um, which... which failed to um, convince the Australian people at the 2019 election that they should back them. Um, and they haven't really done anything um, to prove this since. So this reshuffle, really, it, it doesn't matter too much. The big thing here was getting Mark Butler out of, out of the climate portfolio. Uh, but if the Labor Party fails to address uh, the issues that mainstream Australians are concerned with, um, then it can expect to, to remain in opposition. Um, we've seen a structural decline in the Labor Party vote. In nine out of the last 13 elections, the Labor Party have gone backwards. And at the last election in 2019, which was dubbed the climate election, uh, Labor got the lowest vote in, in the party's history. So I think what's important here is that the Labor Party needs to re-engage with mainstream Australians. The only pressure that matters for the government is the democratic pressure that comes from voters. And we saw in 2019, Australians um, resoundingly rejected uh, the Labor's policies and they supported the coalition's more sensible uh, policies on climate. So I think uh, for as long as the Labor Party failed to change their climate policies and really get down to the issues that mainstream Australians care about, which is uh, job security, particularly in the wake of the COVID uh, pandemic and the recession, um, they're going to continue to fail to gain government. Ebony, WA is opening its border to everyone except for those in New South Wales. Do you think this is fair? Uh, well, I'm probably sure that everyone in New South Wales uh, doesn't think it's fair, but it might look a bit different if you're in Western Australia and you've been enjoying many, many months of being COVID free and, you know, New South Wales is uh, the site of the most recent uh, bigger outbreaks. But I think we have seen all state governments uh, use travel restrictions in one form or another, and WA certainly has been uh, more strict about that than most and for longer. Um, but by the same token, that they haven't seen very much community transmission so far, although there is uh, perhaps some concerns that that might have changed today. And the WA health authorities have said that they will also look at uh, potential local lockdowns um, because of the new and much more transmissible form of the virus that's uh, emerged from Britain and other places. So, yeah, I'm sure very disappointing for uh, any New South Wales residents who were hoping to get back to see family, uh, but it might feel different if you're a WA resident hoping to keep your family safe. Ken, what do you think of the decision to shut out New South Wales? And also, you spent some time in WA. Do you think the state is prepared for an outbreak? Well, I'm very concerned that uh, WA is not prepared um, because throughout the year, Mark McGowan's been able to keep um, the virus at bay, um, perhaps partly through luck and partly through his very, very hard border with the rest of the country. Um, so what comes out of his press conference today and, and how events unfold in the next few days remains to be seen. Um, but I think the important point here is that 
uh, it feels like over the past year, politics has, um, has been a bigger concern than public health at times um, for the McGowan government. So we saw a few weeks ago when Brisbane uh, got one case of coronavirus, WA closed the border to the entirety of Queensland. That's not the kind of proportionate uh, public health measure that um, you'd expect to see. And I think that uh, the, the, the coming March election, the state election in WA is um, a very big contributing factor to the heavy handedness with which uh, Mark McGowan has imposed uh, the border at times. Um, and, and it's also, it doesn't just affect uh, residents of New South Wales, it affects everyone around the country and it affects West Australians because if they want to uh, travel to other states and see their family or have other family come to see them, this really disrupts their plans. And there's no certainty really for Western Australians that they'll be able to see their family uh, when the borders could be put up at a moment's notice. Um, but like I say, we'll, we'll uh, wait and see what the outcome of this coming press conference is and how things go over the next few days. We are standing by to hear from WA Premier Mark McGowan in just a few minutes' time. But before we get there, Ebony, mask mandates are now uh, coming into effect shortly in the US. Is it too little too late? Uh, it is too little too late. And President Trump saw to that there's been more than 430,000 deaths from COVID in the United States. The virus is absolutely running rampant and uh, the Biden administration has, has inherited uh, absolute carnage and mismanagement from the Trump administration. So the advantage of a mask mandate is um, masks are cheap, uh, they're immediate and we know that they're effective. They're absolutely not going to be enough. Uh, but the Biden administration has to start somewhere if it's going to stop the enormous number of uh, deaths and cases from COVID-19 that they've inherited from the Trump administration. So uh, it won't be the last thing that they implement, I'm sure, um, but we know how important masks have been to stop transmission uh, all around the globe. So it's certainly a welcome start. Ken, what do you make of the mask mandate in the US and how do you think residents there will respond to it? Well, we'll wait and see, uh, I'd imagine, with the US, with the, the um, particular culture of, of freedom um, that they have over there, it might be quite difficult for the government to impose a mandatory um, mask order and have high compliance, but we'll wait and see what happens there. Um, I think if, if masks are coming in and that uh, the health advice is that this will be effective, then we really do need to see um, commensurate uh, relaxation of some other restrictions where it's safe to do so. Um, the US currently has 13 million unemployed people, and that's twice what it was this time last year. We know that lockdown measures um, have been particularly devastating for those who are least able to afford um, the hardship. So it's, it's poorer people, lower socioeconomic people, um, small business owners. They're the ones who have really suffered um, throughout the past year. Um, and we continue to see businesses be closed and people thrown out of employment. So it needs to be a very high priority um, of the Biden administration to see as many American workers as possible um, get back into jobs. Keen Hussey and Ebony Bennett, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. The bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. It's no coincidence that we have a wages crisis in Australia. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas.